Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. I have been thinking about themes for October Daily 2021. October's only a few days away. It is hard to believe. I pulled this old Halloween journal off the shelf. I wanna just flip through it and maybe get some ideas for this year. This book was all about witches and just, uh, it was kind of a story. I don't know, you could go back and watch old videos, but I do wanna flip through this and I thought I would turn the camera on. This book was sort of inspired by thinking about generations of, I guess, folklore or um, spells, tradition, superstition being passed down. And I had the idea to start with some family members and there was a, a granddaughter, a mother, and then a grandmother, and the grandmother had been a witch. And I went through and picked like the three most popular names of, of the time period, time period that I was thinking these people would be aged. I love this shadow box on the front. That's one of my favorite things about this journal. And it's got just a collection of things to represent, ideas, thoughts, and I don't think any of us are just one thing. We're a mix of all sorts of things. Uh, for example, my grandmothers, my maternal grandmother, my paternal grandmother, they were almost exactly the same age, and they were raised in pretty much the same area. They were both North Carolina girls, and honestly, so and this is kind of an interesting story that ties in. I had a couple of dreams right before they died, and they died really close together. So I lost my maternal grandmother on Thanksgiving Day in 2007, and then my paternal grandmother died in February of 2008. Right before they both passed away, I had a really vivid dream about uh, falling stars or shooting stars, and uh, they were at two different times in the dream, and they landed, each one landed right at my feet. And I thought just how symbolic that was, and I felt like it meant something. And then later, of course, I lost both of my grandmothers, and they, they were both like stars in the family. They, you know, they had a huge influence whether it was good or bad, and usually it's a mix. Uh, my maternal grandmother was a was just an angel. Um, she was very sweet and kind. I can't think of any bad influence she had on anyone. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that, like, we're all made up of different influences, thoughts, beliefs that come into us um, by way of osmosis almost. We hear things from our family members, when we're little, we kind of soak things up. Um, superstition runs through families, and it can also run through religious, faithful families who don't consider it any sort of witchcraft. And I'm not saying that it is, but back in the 1600s, um, especially I think that's when everything got really lit up, no pun intended, as far as chasing witches and accusing people. And Someone even came onto my channel when I very first started this and said, how dare you put a sacred religious uh, symbol into your little thing of playing witch? Well, I'm, I'm not playing witch at all. Uh, this was more a study of just the history. And, you know, that kind of thinking, just quick to rush in and judge, that's why a lot of women were put to death. They were not given fair trials. Uh, they may not have even been participating in witchcraft. It could have been something that happened that somebody noticed and associated with something that was paranormal or supernatural, and all of a sudden there's a witch hunt. Uh, women were also put to death because maybe they were left uh, as widows and they were left with property and somebody wanted that property and it was a very easy thing to do for a man to come forward and accuse her of witchcraft and just, you know, take her and hang her or burn her and then the property was up for grabs. All sorts of stories like that. Anyway, I've rambled too long, but there was no malintent whatsoever in putting this together. Um, 
it's just a collection of things to symbolize the story that was growing in my mind. And I even put these pictures in and distressed them of, you know, we've got Minnie, who goes back probably to the late 1800s, and then we've got Helen, and this looks to me like a picture maybe from the 40s, and then we've got Jessica, who was me in the story, and that was like from the 1980s. And what I did was go onto Google and pick the most popular names of those decades. So I don't know a lot about Morgan Le Fay. I know that it ties in to the, you know, the legend of King Arthur, and that's earlier than like the time of King James and the 1600s and all of that. So it's a different, a different thought. Um, I believe she was a sorceress and enchantress. So I'm going to do my entire October Daily 2021 around learning more about Morgan Le Fay. If anybody wants to join me, that is going to be the theme. I started this morning working on put together, putting together some collages that will have images that we can cut out and put into the journals. And I'm planning to write little bits of information and just try to learn more about Morgan Le Fay and the story and the influences as I go through my October daily for this year, 2021. Like this, um, which is 1400s to 1600s, because of superstition, poverty, and sometimes just disgust, anyone who was ugly, women with hooked noses, warts, hair on their face, or even deformed, could be labeled a witch and dragged away for trial. So this journal was from 2019, so this is a couple of years ago. And it's just full of all sorts of images and history, things that I found out while researching. Um, so many really, really sad stories. This is one from 1589. Gillis Duncan, I think, was the name. She was accused by her employer of witchcraft after he observed her skill in curing the ill, which he deemed unnaturally miraculous. Her employer, a deputy bailiff, took charge of the examination. She was arrested in 1589, confessed under torture, and executed. Uh, Duncan named many other witches in the event, and the event sparked a series of trials and executions that are now known as the North Berwick Witch Trials, which were sanctioned by King James VI. And of course, that's King James VI of Scotland. He was King James I of England, so we see King James I in the the King James Version of the Bible. I put a lot of, and you know, she may have been practicing with herbal medicine. Maybe she knew a lot about how to heal and what to do. Maybe she was instinctive about cleanliness and, you know, things that uh, one of our presidents who was shot and, and died later from the bullet wound, um, was that Garfield? I always have to stop and think. It wasn't the bullet that killed him. They they poked and prodded with unclean hands until he developed an infection. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so I ramble. There are just, oh, I love going back and looking at this. So there is a lot of just um, imagination in here. And then there are also some factual things, but I put this little flower in here from one of great grandmother Minnie's books. I love you. And it's got a J for Jessica. So it kind of unfolded as the way someone might feel if they knew that their grandmother had been a witch or even labeled a witch, um, you know, but they were known to be kind and a family member. And there's just a lot to think about in here. Here's another well-known practitioner. Marie Catherine Laveau. So these are just words. I put Native American and American spiritualism, root work, conjure, Louisiana voodoo. Her daughter, Marie II, also practiced. So she's a Louisiana Creole practitioner, renowned in New Orleans as the voodoo queen, was said to have been a devout Catholic. And here's an image from Macbeth. When shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning, or in rain? And I always come across artists and things that are just so 
you know, so beautiful. Sulamith Wolfing, that was the artist. And I believe that she drew from a very young age. I think it's just the way she looked at the world. I think she was an artist from the very start. Some of you might remember the story of my mother that I talked about. And this little baby here looks almost like she's in a, a veil or a shroud. And my mother was actually, she is a twin. And she was born during a time when babies were delivered at home. The doctor was about to leave after my mother was born and one of my great aunts who had already had several children stopped the doctor and said, I don't think she's done. I believe there's another baby. So he came back and said, you're right. And the second baby was born in what they called a veil. And at that time there was still, still some superstition about babies being born in veils having powers like to be able to see the future. Um, I don't think any of that superstition was had any impact on the way the baby was delivered or treated or anything like that. Um, but the baby just didn't do well from the very start. I think that it, probably in the amniotic sac, I guess, uh, and it's uh, adhered to the baby's face or whatever. But she only lived for a couple of days, and my mother has always felt a sense of loss or like she's missing something. Love all these images and the color purple in here. Anyway, not to just go on and on about this. There are some videos that go back to this actual December daily and all of the pages in here. But I did want to start thinking about what I'm going to do for this year because it's pretty much upon us. We have, what, three or four days? And I definitely want to, you know, stick to my plan to do an October daily for this year. And you all know one of the reasons I went ahead and made my October daily journal a few weeks back was so that I could start collecting things, uh, buy things as I see them, go on these little trips to the Dollar Tree and go ahead and start buying anytime I found stickers because I had a place to put them in preparation for October daily. <laughs> so many little bits of ephemera in here. And I remember the word doppelganger. I'm sure we will learn some new things. Oh, I love that charm. I think that came from Michael's. They have some, uh, and I need to go in there and see what they have this year. That's a, a thought. Maybe I can do that this week. And there's King James the first. Of course, history is written by the people who write history. And we don't always know what the influences were at the time. Uh, I'm not an anti-King James the First person. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe. I just uh, remember reading that he did sanction some of the witch trial uh, inquiries and maybe even the tortures. I'm not sure, but... Uh, I think later he he pulled back from that. Oh, I love this man, Alan Rickman, and I love this. I love the Harry Potter movies. And Severus Snape, he's my favorite. Absolutely my favorite. And here is part of the wording for. Uh, Macbeth. This says some sources say Macbeth was written for King James the first. Look at this book page. You can hardly see the man standing there. The secrets of our garden. Looks like a treasure box there and maybe a pirate. And there are some more cards from Harry Potter, Hermione. Powerful which in the Harry Potter series. I love this. Beautiful postcard there. And then there is a Harry Potter trading card, Hedwig the Owl. Did 
This is another Sulamith, Sulamith Wolfing. This book was getting really full and you can see the pages were starting to bend a little bit or curve a little bit. Again, more of the Sulamith Wolfing. Love the birds there. I will have to read about her again. This is interesting. I never noticed this. Look in the center of this pressed flower. It looks like an eye. Pretty amazing. Oh, I love that image of the door. I had forgotten some of the beautiful things that were in this journal. I love this paper, that book page with the little black cat. There is a page from an old alphabet book in French. I think I may have sold that in the shop. Or maybe not. I don't remember. Oh, and that old picture. 1998. That reminds me a little bit of the front porch on my old house. And then more from Sulamith Wolfing. Just almost a mystical feeling to her paintings. And even more. I had forgotten I had this many. Oh, so beautiful. Again, I am going to focus on Morgan Le Fay. And if anybody wants to join me in either studying Morgan Le Fay or picking someone from history and maybe diving really deep into one person who was tied to witchcraft or Halloween or anything like that. Ooh, Palermo catacombs. Wow. Some little stickers. A tiny little witch's hat. Forgot about that. Oh, I'm excited. This is getting me in the mood for starting the October Daily. I don't really care for the way these pages turned at the end. This is a one signature junk journal, and that is one of my favorites to work in always. And I knew that I had to construct the book in a way that I could attach this almost like a signature and have that sort of informational shadow box in the front. Uh, this ended up getting really thick. I still love this journal. There's, it's not, it's not a problem, but I think if I were to make one this big, again, I would do two or three signatures. So just really pretty. There's an old doll dress. And what, oh, I think there were some tarot cards in here. Just some odd ones that I had come across. I think if I were to ever get more into something like that, I look at it as a tool. Uh, and I've read other people saying that, that it's more of an introspective process to have someone pull out cards and have you question how, what am I to learn? Um, and to examine areas of your life like work, love, um, insecurity or security, health, all those different things. So I'm not saying that I'm going to get into them. I just, I think sometimes the cards are really beautiful and it does make a person stop and think. So again, here are just some pretty charms, things that I found. And I do love this journal. It's one of my favorites ever. I just got so deep into this journal while I was making it. Really enjoyed putting it together and the shadow box. It's just, I really love it. So there we go. I just wanted to check in and get inspired for October, which is right around the corner. I hope you enjoyed this flip through. Leave a comment if you would like, uh, letting me know what your theme is going to be. And I will be happy to share whatever um, cutouts or collage images I come up with for my Morgan Le Fay study. Okay, I will be back really soon. Bye for now.